REST Server Tool. In this lecture, I'll give you an overview of what is REST Server Tool and how does it work. I'll also show you how to launch the REST Server Tool and use the Explorer for checking out the specifications for the RESTful APIs and also for invoking those APIs. At the end of this lecture, you should be able to explain the advantages of using the REST Server Tool. To be RESTful, an API must follow certain architectural constraints and practices. If you're new to REST API, I would suggest that you go through some basic material on REST API. I've provided some links to a couple of websites that have done a good job of explaining RESTful APIs. Please use those. The business domain model is created around resources. Example of resources would be a stock in financial industry, a car in the auto industry, and so on. The transactions are defined to make changes to the state of these resources. For example, for a car, you may change the owner of the car, or you may delete the car instance once it has been sent to the junkyard. As a standard practice, REST APIs are designed to use specific HTTP verbs for operating on the resources, depending on the type of the operation. Here, get verb is used for reading the resource state. Put is used for updating the state of the resource. Post is for creating a new resource and delete is used for an operation that would delete the resource. Together, these operations are referred to as the CRUD operations. C stands for create, R for read, U for update, and D for delete. Let's start with what is a REST server. I'll quote the Fabric developers. It is a standalone Node.js process that exposes the business network resources as REST APIs. Essentially, it is one of the composer tools that you can use for exposing your business network model in the form of REST APIs. The REST server process sits in front of the Fabric network application. The connection configuration is part of the REST server setup that enables the REST server to connect with the business network application. Developer can hit the Explorer URL exposed by the REST server to get information about the API. And not only can they check out the information on how to invoke the REST APIs, they can also try out the APIs and carry out some level of testing as well. Applications can connect directly to the REST server instead of connecting with the Hyperledger fabric. The benefit of that approach would be that the application developer will not need to depend on any Hyperledger fabric specific library, and the code will be much more simplified and maintainable. So with this kind of an architecture, the application can invoke the CRUD operations by way of the APIs. The application can invoke the model transactions by way of the APIs. Undeniably, the REST server is a great tool. Now let me demonstrate to you how it is configured and how it works. The Composer REST server can be launched by using the command composer-rest-server. You need to provide value for some of these options. The minus C is to specify the card that will be used by the Composer REST server. Minus P is used for specifying the port on which the REST server will listen for the incoming traffic. These three options are related to the TLS configuration for the REST server. And the rest of the option allow you to leverage certain functionality in the Composer REST server. Since I have not yet covered those functionalities, I will not be using these options at this time. Composer REST server may be launched in interactive mode or in the command line mode. In the interactive mode, there is a limited set of options for which you need to provide the values. In the command line mode, you can use all of the options which I described earlier. In the demo, I'll use the interactive mode. Before I launch the Composer REST server, I need to make sure that my Hyperledger Fabric environment is up and also need to ensure that the business network application is available to the REST server. So here, this container is for the test BNA application. And these four containers are for the Fabric components. Now we are ready to launch our REST server, provide the card name, and then use the default for a namespace, then select N or no for all other parameters. The Composer REST server by default listen on port 3000. So at this point, our Composer REST server is up and available. The sample model that we are using for this demo has two resources defined in it, the sample asset and the user. Under the sample asset, you will see that there are multiple URLs 
as well as the HTTP verb that applies to those URLs. Essentially, these are the CRUD operations that you can carry out on sample assets. The idea here is that with the get, you can get a list of assets which are already defined. And to get the list of assets, simply click on try it out. And as you can see, in the response body, we got zero assets. And that is because no asset has been created at this point. So let's go ahead and use the post which is used for creating an asset. To create an asset, simply click on the example values, provide the ID and the value, let's say 2000. Try it out. At this point, the REST server is connecting to the network application. And then you will see a response body that basically indicates that the post was successful. Now what I'm going to do is again, execute get to see if we retrieve the ID one. As you can see, we retrieved the asset that we just created. Other get URL will let you specify the ID of a asset that you would like to retrieve. So if you click on this get, you will see that it will require you to provide the ID. And I can provide the ID of the asset that we just created. And as you can see, it retrieved the ID one with value 2000. The sample model also exposes a transaction. And this transaction is change asset value. To execute this transaction, you need to click on the post copy the example value. Here you will have to delete the transaction ID, otherwise you'll get an error. And then you see this related asset. This has to be provided the asset ID in a specific format. Don't worry about this specific format that I'm referring to. You'll learn all about it in the next section on modeling language. So I'm gonna change the value to 3000 from 2000 and click on try it out. After this is executed, you will see that we got a 200 OK. You check the value in the asset by using get, the value should be 3000. And as you can see, the value is now reflected here. That is how you would execute the transactions, very similar to how you will carry out the CRUD operations. The REST server also exposes system API. For example, system slash historian. You'll learn about historian later on. Here, you can get the list of all the transactions that have been executed against the business network application. These transactions are not just the transaction, but also the CRUD operations. There are many advantages of using REST server. The first one is that it provides easy access to the network resource specifications and transaction specifications. The developers can use the REST server interface for exploration, for testing out the model, and to get visibility into the transactions that have been executed against the business network application. And keep in mind that these transactions are not just the transactions which are executed from the Explorer. These could be transactions that were executed outside of the Explorer, for example, by way of the Composer SDK. Next advantage is application code will become simpler. Why? Because if you're not using any library in the code, and uh, you're using just the REST APIs, most developers are familiar with it. So they can easily write the applications that invoke the REST APIs exposed by the REST server instead of using the Hyperledger Fabric specific libraries. The code will become easy to maintain as a result. Let's summarize. The Composer REST server is a tool that can be used for exposing business network applications as RESTful APIs. The Composer REST server can be launched in an interactive mode or it can be launched in a command line mode. Once the Composer REST server is launched, the developer can use the browser to explore the various APIs available from the business network application. Not only it is possible to explore the APIs, the developers can actually carry out CRUD operations on these APIs. They can execute the transactions. As part of the REST server configuration, you need to provide the card that is used for connecting to the Fabric backend. A single card, which basically represents a single identity, is used by the REST server to execute all the transactions. And this is a problem. I'll discuss the details of this problem in the next lecture.